Hello everybody, my name is Joy and welcome to American Election made by Greg Buchanan. Now if that name sounds familiar, that's because two years ago I played a game called Paper Drumpf and that was basically the first draft sort of of um, this game. Actually, this is the final result. This is the uh, improved version of it. Um, and the reason why I mentioned this is because I think it's really cool to watch developers grow. This is why I uh, revisit games and I look at newer versions of things because it's so cool to see. I am absolutely going to view this as its own game though, and I'm going to ask you to do the same. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Chapter 1, 2016 Your name is Abigail. Your father gave it to you. At least, he said he did that he had argued with your mother over who you would be late into the night. You take after them in that way, your arguments would always be in the evening, you and your girlfriend about important things, about stupid things, you couldn't sleep until you felt okay. Uh, let's, just, let's just pretend everything's important. About important things. Your parents didn't stay together very long. You never knew your mother growing up. There was supposed to be a grandmother too, though, somewhere. Your mother's mother. She was from Shanghai, she was from Rio de Janeiro, she was from Nairobi, she was from Warsaw. Oh man, which one am I gonna pick? Because none of these apply to me even in the slightest. I'm gonna say Warsaw, just because I don't know how to pronounce it. Your grandmother came to this country after a war long ago. That is all that your father would tell you, which war he wouldn't say. You asked your father when he'd come here and he'd laugh. We've always been here. Me and mine, he said. We're American. You are Abigail Thoreau. You are Abigail Thoreau. It's 2016. It's 2016 and you're being followed. A siren wails as you turn off the engine. Red and blue lights dance through the darkness. The cop drives around you, stopping his car right in front of yours as you message your boss to tell him you're going to be late, to tell him where you are. A sun-damaged body lurches in the night, its hand resting along the grip of a gun. Roll down the window or keep the window shut. You're supposed to roll down the window, right? As a good Samaritan. He is close enough now for you to see him. There's something wrong. Get out of the car, madam. Do what he says and exit the car, is that our problem, officer? Just just do what he says, man. You undo your seatbelt and open the door to the car. He backs up and screams slowly at you, and you comply. When you turn to shut the door, he barks at you to keep your hands where he can see them. He is sweating and shaking. What is this all about? Raise your hands and stay silent. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna raise my hand and stay silent. I don't need an overworked cop on me. Turn around, he commands, and, you, and so you do. And you do so. You hear his muffled words, the crackle of his radio as he speaks to his supervisor. You have been driving for hours towards the man who is going to bring America back. And you are tired. Your arms feel weak. Keep holding them up, relax your arms. Like, no, keep, keep them up! You try to keep holding your arms up, but you're tired. You've been tired for a long time now. As they fall, the cop behind you screams at you immediately. Don't move! And you freeze. He moves over to you and grabs your arms, twisting cuffs around them and digging into your skin. What did I fucking tell you? You feel flecks of spit hit your back, the back of your neck as he cries out. What did I fucking tell you? And as he pulls you towards his car, you both hear another. A black, expensive, monstrous truck emerges from the night, followed by another police car. Their inhabitants head towards you both. You finish telling Glass the story of why you are late. Of a mistaken registration plate on a lonely road. Of the choices you made when you had no choice at all. End of chapter 1. Chapter 2. Embers. And why did this loser try to arrest you in the first place? He bites into his Danish. Everyone is nervous. Truman Glass has to go on stage imminently, but he doesn't seem to care. The license plate had been reported stolen. 
a while back. They hadn't moved it from the system yet. That's all. Glass laughs, shaking his head, and leans a small hand onto your right shoulder. <laughs> well, you'll have to do a better job with the next thing we steal. He puts the remnant of his Danish back down on the table and wipes his mouth. How do I look? Like a million dollars or orange? Oh god, I remember this decision. Okay, last time I picked orange, so now I'm gonna say like a million dollars. I'm gonna do my job. I'm gonna do a good job. More like five billion. He doesn't grin. Numerous campaign staffers nervously swarm about him, trying to usher him towards the stage. He swats one away with a brief look and sighs. These guys, they're always rushing me places. People want to see you or that's what you pay them for. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go to friendly route now. Last time I went the sassy route, I'm gonna go to friendly route now, see if it's any... Um, well, it's probably gonna be different anyway, but still. Let me just do a good job. It was easier just being on TV. He rubs at the corner of one of his eyes. Does anyone have an aspirin? Aspirin is given, his wish is their command. It's time to go on stage, sure. Knock him dead, sir. He moves to go, but frustrates a dozen staffers by turning around again a few steps later. He's tired. What was it you said to me that first time we met? I think you're wanted on stage. He shakes his head. This is important. What did you tell me? You said something. It was something important. I said you were wrong about people. I said you were right about people. Mmm... I guess... No, not that. His eye twitches. I meant about presidents and the point of it all. I said a president should serve the people. I said a president should represent the people. That's a difficult one, because I think it's a little bit of both. But I think representation is a very important part of it. He smiles at this. Did you ever wonder if you were wrong? Did any of you ever wonder? He's not just tired, there's something else in the wild glint of his eye. There's something wrong. You should go your due and say it's... What do you mean? What's the point of being president, if there's nothing in it for me? Why shouldn't a president serve himself? You don't really... You need to, you need to go. You need to be on stage. He laughs at you or with you, it's hard to say. He grins all the time and trots along to his stage, to his people, to his life's work. You wait in the wings and watch him approach his podium, the music settling, the cheers gradually subsiding as he waves and smiles and pauses. You've been working on his speech for weeks. You hope he enjoys himself. Himself, you hope the people enjoy it. You've been working on his speech for weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I hope the people enjoy it. Thank you all for being here today, his microphone booms. For coming so far, some of you, right out here to the desert. It's been a long ride, let me tell you. In 2015, I stood at Glass Tower and told you all, told you all of you fine people. I told the world that I was going to be the president one day. I told the world that we were going to bring America back. And that for the first time in a hell of a long time, we were going to put America first. And I said something that a lot of politicians, a lot of the sweating dogs in the media didn't understand. They just didn't. How... How there could be... Sorry, how there could be such a simple solution through the whole mess that we could just put ordinary, hardworking, decent Americans first. And what did I promise? What did I tell the world I'd do? I said I'd cut taxes. I said I'd invest in communities just like this one. This sounds better. I said I'd take back our borders. At this, the first mention of border restrictions for a month, the crowd goes wild. Their frenzied chant, their cacophony of wall-based hymns and prayers mount to obliterate whatever Glass tries to say next. He smiles, he grins, and he raises his slight hand to calm his supportive orchestra. He speaks, his worn face pivoting a little, the humor evaporating away. And, well, here we are. We stand at the edge of America. 
What is out there, beyond the lights of our states? The autocue, a world in need of American leadership, a world of threats, of dangers, of terror. This sounds more um, accurate, I guess. This is what I would write, probably. Well, no, that's not what I would write at all. Oh, God. You know what? I'm going to go this way. I'll tell you what lies out there. What a rotten world it is. What a joke. What losers. Nations that need protecting with American money. Predators and bullies who take our jobs and hack our machines. They're laughing at us. They're laughing because we're no longer what we were. We're no longer what we could be. Throughout my campaign, I have told you all that I will bring America back. But what is America but their people? What needs to be better but all of you? All of us. So I ask you a question. What can change the nature of an American? Is it love of country? Is it the greed and hatred of our enemies? Is it our success even? The answer is simple. This whole year, it's taught me a lesson. I've taught America a lesson. The auto cue, nothing can change our nature. You can change our nature. Yes, yes, you can change your nature. You can change our nature by getting out there and telling my opponent, who should be in jail, by the way, telling those Wall Street slobs that they don't own this country of ours, that we're going to put America first for a change. We need to stand up for ourselves. His face darkens. America has been short-changed. A nation is just its people, and now America is full of everyone else's people. It's all been mixed up, messed up. And we've got to sort this out, folks. We need to get people thinking of ideas. A nation is a family, and our family is under attack. We... A shout comes, piercing through the crowd. You don't know what it says. It's more like a cry than words, like an animal. It's almost a scream. God, I just, I just had to check if I closed my window because, you know, I have neighbors. Check the cameras to see who it is. Run to Glass's auto cue control. Check the cameras. Why would you run to the auto cue? You race over to the camera controls and the staffers already have eyes on the protester. Shaggy brown hair, Christ-like beard, both full of grease. Both strewn with the fat of human kindness. Something about the protesters disgusts you immediately, even beyond his interruption. You hear Glass's voice boom down from the podium. Get that da- blah, blah. Get that clown out of here! Get him a job! As the crowd begins to shout, begins to agitate, something happens. The protester is doing something, reaching for something. He raises an American flag, and he pulls out a lighter. He ignites the flame. Every television camera in the world, every website links to this fire. The red, white and blue burns in the crowd. They swarm towards the men in fury. Some try to stop what is happening. The fire does not stop. It cannot be stopped. It spreads, catching onto the clothes of those closest to the man, to the flag. The crowd only screams. They only boom their words, their grand chorus of the Republic. Two eternal words reverberate upon the borders of America. Get out! End of chapter 2. Hold on, let me check up on my recording real quick, making sure everything's okay. Okay, everything seems fine. That's the end of chapter 2. Now, I'm gonna split it up into smaller bits. I'm not gonna do it in one go like last time, because I feel like my reading skills um, diminish over time. And also, I think it's more fun to, you know, keep the tension up. It, I gotta say, just to compare it uh, for a minute to the uh, original Paper Drum, I think the writing is a lot more flowing, and I, I'm not really the one to give feedback on this, because this is literally written by somebody who is an expert at this. But I, I personally, I feel that this is, um, I feel like it flows a lot better, and it really keeps the suspense up much better. I really like that. Um, anyway... I'm gonna leave it here for now. I will definitely record the rest of it very soon. There's 11 chapters to this. So this is gonna be a new series on the channel. So thank you so much for watching. I will leave a link down in the description uh, to the developer's stuff, to Greg Buchanan's stuff, and I will credit there everybody else I forgot to credit here in the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!